I want you to stop looking at waveforms, which is really difficult because they're everywhere. They're in our DAWs, they're online, people are sharing them everywhere, and they can be useful up to a point, but they can also be really misleading. So in this video I want to talk about why I say that, what we can and can't tell by looking at a waveform and why, and how you can avoid being fooled. So here we've got five different pieces of music which have very different looking waveforms. And I'm going to start by just looking at those waveforms and trying to draw some conclusions from them, and then we'll see whether those conclusions are reliable or not. So the first song that I've chosen is Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. It's uh, famous for getting louder all the way through and being pretty loud at the end. And the waveform shows that pretty clearly. So in this case, it looks like the waveform is quite useful. The next song is My Helper by Silent Gratitude. This is an EDM track that I mastered, and the waveform makes it look as though there's more variety in the loudness, but it's still got some pretty loud sections in it. The next file is Halo by Porcupine Tree, and judging by the waveform, we're going to expect this to be even louder than the previous two songs, and it's more consistently loud all the way through. Now the fourth song is Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars, and this is the kind of waveform that makes a lot of people unhappy, because you can see that the top of the waveform there is basically flat. That looks as though it has been heavily clipped or limited. And there's a lot of people who would look at that waveform and tell you that file is going to sound bad without question. The final file I've chosen is Chandelier by Sia. This one from the waveform looks to be the loudest of all of the files. You can see that the peaks are pushed right up to zero pretty much all the way through the song. The only thing that I would say is that if I pull that loudness of that file back by a dB though, and then we compare, it actually doesn't look that different to Uptown Funk. And that probably gives you a clue as to what I'm going to say the limitations of looking at waveforms is. But now let's look at those same audio files in a different way, using my Loudness Penalty Studio application, which was designed specifically to help us quickly and easily assess the loudness statistics of a number of files at once. So these are the same five files, but loaded up in Loudness Penalty Studio, and rather than showing the waveforms, it shows the loudness measurements. And the one we're going to focus on is the pink line here, which is the overall, the integrated loudness measured in LUFS. Now, LUFS is not a perfect way of assessing loudness, but it's an international standard that's used by broadcast and streaming services. And I've done other videos where I've talked about some of the limitations of LUFS, so we don't need to get into it now. But I think one interesting thing we can see right away is that despite the different waveforms of these first three files, they all have very similar loudness results. The white loudness range area in the display here shows us the difference in contrast between the loudest and quietest moments of each file, but the overall loudness values are very similar. And in fact, if we listen to the end, at least, of each song, we will find that they are not that different in loudness. Let's just try that. So that's the first word of caution that I would give you about looking at peak waveforms. And actually, I don't know about you, but despite the fact that the waveform for Halo by Porcupine Tree looks bigger than both of the previous ones, of the three, I thought that Silent Gratitude, My Helper, sounded the loudest. And sure enough, we can see that it measures slightly louder as well. Now, of course, we need to be careful talking about overall loudness levels. But in this case, we're just comparing the loudest sections of these songs. And I guess one thing you could say is, well, the peak levels are kind of similar, and they sound of a similar loudness, so maybe in this sense the peak levels are reliable. Let's just put a pin in that idea for the time being and think about Uptown Funk instead. This is the one that looks as though it has been 
heavily clipped or at least heavily limited. We're expecting it to be louder than the other three. And when we look at the measurements, we can see that, yes, it is. These are measuring about minus 14. Uptown Funk measures minus 10 LUFS. But does that flat-topped waveform mean that it sounds terrible? Let's take a listen and see. Before we leave, let me tell y'all a little something. Uptown Funk you up. Uptown Funk you up. I think we can agree that no, it doesn't sound terrible. It doesn't sound like it's heavily clipped or distorted. It does sound louder than the other songs, but that tells us something else important about waveforms. The peak level of this song is actually lower than the peak level on Halo, but it sounds louder. And I think another thing to say is that sure enough, the final two songs are louder than the first three by some considerable margin. But I think the thing that is really interesting and important to notice is that the Sia track is actually, when we measure it, a whole 5 dB louder than Uptown Funk, even though, as I mentioned, if we reduce them so that the peak levels are similar, the waveforms are pretty much indistinguishable. If anything, the waveform for Chandelier looks ever so slightly less flat-topped than for Uptown Funk, but it is a whole 5 dB louder, and I will just preview that. In fact, to avoid deafening you, I'm going to turn on loudness matching in Loudness Penalty Studio here. I'll put it on album mode so it keeps the difference between these songs. And I'll just play you a comparison between these different tracks. And of course, if we go to track mode, which is the way that you'll hear these songs in playlists and all the time on YouTube, when we compare the levels. And actually, the Sia track sounds somewhat underwhelming to me, listened to in that way, which is not surprising because it's been turned down by a massive 11 dB almost. But that's a little bit of a tangent for this video. The main point that I want to make is there's no way of telling from the waveforms alone that Sia is 5 dB louder than Uptown Funk. And in fact, there's almost no way of telling any of the differences between any of these files except in the crudest possible sense. So why is that? Why are waveforms so unreliable for trying to understand how loud something sounds? The answer is, if we zoom into it, it's tracing every tiny detail of the audio signal as represented by the electrical signals that have been recorded. When we zoom right out on the waveform this way, what we're seeing is the peak levels. All of these waveforms are displaying peak levels, and peaks are notoriously bad at helping us judge loudness. If you just think about comparing, for example, a snare sound with a synth pad. The snare sound has a huge transient at the beginning of the signal and decays very rapidly to be much smaller, whereas a sustained synth pad almost certainly has far less transient information. The waveform will be much smoother. If you match the peak levels of those two waveforms with each other, the synth pad will sound loud and the snare will sound weak by comparison. That's why using compression and limiting is such an important part of getting a big, full drum sound when it's done right. And that, in a nutshell, is why we need to stop obsessing about waveforms. They're just a continuous stream of peak values, and peaks don't give us reliable loudness information, especially once they start getting up close to zero. And actually, they don't tell us anything else very useful about the music either. They don't tell us about the EQ balance, they don't tell us about the stereo image, 
They don't even tell us when something's been heavily limited. They can give us an idea, but the fact that these two files look so similar, but Chandelier has been much more heavily limited and clipped than Uptown Funk, shows us how unreliable that is as a method of making these judgments. So, that's why I say please stop looking at waveforms. And actually, I don't really mean stop looking at waveforms. I mean stop judging music by waveforms. We can't look at this waveform and say that this song is louder than this one. Overall, they measure about the same. We can't look at this one and say that it has been more heavily clipped or that the flat topping of the waveforms causes an audible problem. With some experience, we can look at a waveform like this and say that it's likely to be heavily limited and compressed. But remember, a 5 dB difference between these two files. If we turn C a down by 5 dB, those files will now actually sound a similar loudness. But look how different the waveforms look. So by all means, use waveforms to navigate between sections of songs as a way of finding the loud sections, or use them as a shortcut for when you first open up a file just to see what you think it might sound like and whether you think you need to reduce the playback gain. But please don't try and draw any other conclusions than that. There's a significant risk you'll be badly misled. So I hope you found that helpful or interesting. Let me know in the comments whether you've been caught out by any of the things I've been talking about when you've been looking at waveforms yourself. And does that mean you don't pay any attention to them at all anymore? Or do you still find them helpful sometimes? If you enjoyed this video, I think you will also love a free guide I've put together. It's called the Home Mastering Guide, and it covers the six essential steps to releasing your music with complete confidence, in my opinion. It's just a simple PDF, and you can get your copy at homemasteringguide.com. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.